It is 740 on your hometown station, KHTS. Dr. Jamie Ronchetto of Cinema, Cinema Veterinary Center is in for her bi-monthly check-in. Hi, Dr. Jamie. Good morning. The cinema vet herself. No coffee. <laughs> yeah. No. Never? No, I'm not a coffee girl. Not a thing, huh? Mm-hmm. Are, do, you, do you drink tea? Do you drink caffeinated I'll, tea? I'll drink tea. Okay. Yeah, or have like a Diet Coke later in the day or something like that. Right. But, yeah. We just heard from Dr. Sanjay Gupta who said, uh, let, the, let the tea cool down a little bit. Yeah, before, you know, I heard that. Yeah, don't want to yeah. rupture the esophagus. No, that would not be good. We don't give coffee or tea or anything other than water to our pets, right? Right. Yeah, caffeine is very much a no-no for them. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So you developed such a good rapport with Tori in the morning. Yeah. I, I, I'm very, I'm very intimidated. Uh- <laughs> so I'm going to try to fill in. I'm going to give it the old college try. Let's start with supplementary health care. So we know we don't overfeed our dogs. We take them out for walks. But is there anything else we can do to kind of help keep them in shape? Any vitamins, any supplements, any oils? Yeah, absolutely. So the best... Um, supplements that I can recommend would be, first of all, an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. So like a fish oil type of supplement for um, dogs and cats. Um, It's a really good supplement for their skin and their coat, but also can help with joints. Um, So I think it's just a good supplement overall. Um, It's easy enough to dispense. It comes in typically just a liquid that you can like teaspoon out and just put it onto their food. Usually they enjoy that. It's a little fishy and yummy and um so that makes it really easy um otherwise you can use like a gel cap you Mm -hmm. know and kind of pierce that and and put it onto their food too so um that works really easily um the other good supplement that i would recommend for aging pets so maybe middle aged you know if they're getting a little bit older would be a joint supplement like glucosamine Mm -hmm. so again similar to what we would take um but they come in animal formulas so like a treat so um glucosamine is a good joint supplement it helps to protect the joints helps to try to prevent progression of any kind of arthritis um and kind of naturally decrease some inflammation um so for animals rather than like we would take like tablets or capsules so animals can take it in a treat form like a chew or tablets or like a powder that again you can mix into their food if they're not a fan of treats um so those are my top two that i'm recommending pretty Uh, much every day we're talking with dr jamie ronchetto the cinema vet herself uh located on cinema drive right in valencia i was on the cinema vet website and Uh the thing i love about the cinema vet website not only that you treat it like a, a a movie (laughs) <laughs> uh, where it's like, you know, meet the staff is meet the cast. Yeah. The blog. You guys are constantly updating the blog. I was looking in the month of May alone. Uh-huh. You guys have already had like six blog posts. It's it's impressive. It really is. Thanks. And one of the posts is giving your dog or your, your pet pills. Because yeah. when, when my dog uh, goes to the vet, she gets the pills. She doesn't want to take them. For some reason, she doesn't want to. Yeah. What advice do you, uh, do you give to people? Uh for giving their dogs pills yeah it's it can be really tricky cats are even harder um but they can when we can we try to use tablets that may be chewable or flavored so that's always nicer um but many times we can't and if they're more like capsules um that you have to get them to swallow um typically if you can hide it in something so they make pill pockets we have a product that's similar that's like a pill wrap paste that doesn't stick to you but it sticks to the pill and it's like a bacon flavor um so they they usually take that like a treat really well um you know canned food works well like cheese like a piece of string cheese you can just stick it straight in the middle of it that tends to work really well so i'm a big fan of hiding it in something disguising it right (laughs) yes disguise (laughs) it as something else try to trick them yeah right yeah sneaking the pill in like the trojan horse Yeah, yeah exactly cool yeah so I have a golden retriever, mm-hmm. and she's constantly shedding. I'm constantly swiffering, but she also slobbers. So along <laughs> with the swiffering, I'm doing the I'm doing with the floor cleaners. But I feel like I might be putting my dog in danger. Should we be on the lookout for any chemicals in household cleaning products? That's a really good question. Um, I think in general, if they're out of the general vicinity while you're actually cleaning, then it's probably the best once everything's dry it should be fine um certainly if you're using anything really potent like bleach you want to dilute it um cats for sure are much more sensitive to smells and irritants that way Mm. um and certainly excuse me if you have 
like a bird in the household, they are very, very sensitive to cleaners and irritants and things that are aerosolized. So you would want to move them out of the, the general vicinity that you're cleaning until everything has calmed down. We're talking with Dr. Jamie Ranchetto of Cinema Vet, the Cinema Vet herself. Summer's right around the corner. Is yep. there anything, any, any tips, anything we should know going into the summer? Um, I mean, I think I talk about it every year that with, especially out here, we get so, so hot to just be really aware that, um, both with dogs and cats that we need to keep them cool, just like we want to keep ourselves comfortable and cool. So don't keep them outside. A, a dog igloo is not sufficient because it actually gets really, really hot in there. You know, make sure they have a good source of water, um, and try to take your dogs out walking or hiking when it's a lot cooler, mm -hmm. not at three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, wait till it's dusky right. so it's cooled off. Yeah. Dr. Jamie Ronchetto of Cinema Vet, the full service vet hospital with the aim of giving dogs, cats, reptiles, reptiles. Yep. Dr. Wheelbarger sees reptiles and sees birds. Do they perform surgery on reptiles? Yep. How does that happen? Are they just like tiny <laughs> instruments? Um, yeah, I mean, everything's sort of to scale. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, we don't typically do it very often, but if sometimes it's needed, you know. What, yeah. is, what is the most difficult animal to perform surgery on? Um, I don't know that I know that. I just do, I do dogs, cats, and pocket pets. So okay. rabbits and guinea pigs and those kinds of things. But, um, Dr. Amber Wheelbarger does birds and reptiles too. And, and certainly they come with their own set of, you know, problems with, you know, certainly anesthesia can be complicated and, and delicate. Um, reptiles, um, are definitely just sort of a whole different ball game, you know? Right. So. Whole different beast, literally. Exactly. <laughs> so the uh, Cinema Vet, full service vet hospital for dogs, cats, reptiles, birds, and pocket pets. Outstanding quality care in the areas of wellness, medicine, and surgery located on Cinema Drive in Valencia. Meet the team. Meet the cast. Get some additional info on all of its services. Check out its frequently updated blog. I'm not even kidding about this. Go check it out. And more information, all at cinemavet.com. Thank you, Dr. Jamie. Thank you so much. Of course. 747 here on KHTS. Time for a quick break. Stay tuned. Traffic coming up.